This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the non-current asset held for sale. So remember, that's whereby we have a non-current asset that we have made the decision to sell. So that's the key bit. We're going to recover the value of the asset through a sale uh, as opposed to any continuing use. Okay, helped. What? Well, hence, why it's no longer non-current. Okay, just note uh, that if you are scrapping an asset, then that will not be a non-current asset held for sale because you're not going to recover anything from a sale. Okay, so anything that's scrapped, it's just written off. Okay, it will never be categorised as a non-current asset held for sale. Uh, again, I think it's more SBR, but but it's there just in case. Uh, you could have a disposal group uh, of assets to be disposed of. So maybe you're disposing of your uh, a particular restaurant uh, from your group and therefore you're getting rid of the assets. You will then no longer have the liabilities uh, because they will have been transferred as you dispose of that part of the business. So what you have there is a disposal group. So instead of a non-current asset held for sale, you could have a disposal group held for sale. And that could even be split in terms of the assets and the liabilities that are being disposed of. But whoa, a bit too far. OK, stop there. OK, yeah. Uh, what we're going to focus on is an individual asset. And I think that's a little bit more important because what we've got here is the criteria. And there's lots of them. So some of these criteria could be tested within a multiple choice style question. Uh, which of the following are or which of the following are not criteria with regards to classifying a non-current asset held for sale. And effectively, the idea behind the, the, the criteria is that you can't just play around with it and pretend that you are selling it, okay? Trying to manipulate the accounts. There has to be objective evidence that you are going to sell this asset, okay? And if you meet the criteria, then you can go through there and apply the accounting rules to the disclosures that you are going to make. OK, so key bit that you've got there and there's lots of them. So don't get too panicky. We'll come up with a mnemonic for the seven or the several seven different pieces that we've got here. Uh, so it needs to be available for sale in its immediate condition. OK, uh, so you're looking to sell it. It can be sold just like that. OK, you're not continuing to use it. If you're carrying on using it in any capacity, then it might not then be available for sale in its present condition. OK, if you're still trying to fulfill orders, it's not for sale, is it? OK, yeah, you might be marketing it for sale, but you can't sell it immediately. OK, uh, and then what you've got is this highly probable criterion. So. Is it more likely than not that you will sell that asset? OK, so what you've got here uh, is that you need to be committed to the plan. So it's not just something that you're saying, oh, yeah, but we're going to pretend to sell it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. OK, no, you've gone through there and said, right, here's the asset. We don't lo no longer use it. Uh, it it's not producing the, the volume of goods that we require. So we are going to go through that and sell it. OK, so you've got to be committed. Uh, you also need to be or have made a start in terms of the plan itself. So looking for a buyer, actually developing a plan to go through there and sell it. OK, uh, you need to be marketing it at a, a reasonably fair price compared to the market value. You know, you're not throwing it in there ridiculously high or ridiculously low in terms of what the, the fair value is. So it is a, a genuine sale. Uh if we're thinking about it being non-current, you know, you would expect it to take place with within 12 months. OK, uh, going from non-current to current. So we expect it to take place in less than 12 months. And also it should be highly likely uh, that there's no change in plan. OK, uh, or it is unlikely that there will be significant changes to the plan. OK, <laughs> wow. Uh, what have we got there? Uh, we can come up with a mnemonic. It's a little bit of a fudge, like, like most mnemonics are, really. But what can we do? Uh, so what we've got there is the mnemonic. Is it trances? I 
has no link to sales whatsoever, but you might be in a little bit of a trance as uh, you're wandering in there to your financial reporting exam. Okay, uh, so what does it stand for? Well, the T is there for 12 months. So we expect the asset to be sold within 12 months. Uh, R is that you are marketing it at a reasonable price. Uh, a is that it is available for sale in its immediate or present condition. N is that there will be no change in the plan or no significant changes. C is that we are committed to a plan to sell the asset. Uh, e, this is my fudged one really. Uh, we are expected to sell it. So that there effectively is saying that it is highly probable. Uh, and then S is that you have started, started to go through there and locate a buyer uh, and start the plan itself. OK, so you've got there a new monitor that you can remember and apply, if you like, to, to any particular scenario. OK, uh, so committed to memory. Uh, and if you do, uh, you won't go too far wrong. OK, so that will then determine whether or not it is an IFRS 5 non-current asset held for sale. We then need to look at the accounting. So just down right at the very bottom, hidden away, is that if you have a non-current asset held for sale, it's valued at the lower of the carrying value and the fair value less cost to sell. Okay. So you need to look at the carrying value of that item of PPE. So cost less accumulated depreciation up until that point where you make the decision to classify it as held for sale. You compare it to the fair value, less cost to sell, and you go with the lower. Yeah, the reason why we're going with the lower is that little old lady strikes again called prudence. Okay, because it's not prudent to go through there uh, and recognize the asset at a higher value than what it is currently recognized at. So it's currently recognized at its carrying value. So it's not prudent to recognize any gains until they are actually realized, is it? And if the fair value was higher, then we will be anticipating those gains. So we got to wait until we then physically sell the asset to recognize those gains. But prudent says that if you anticipate a loss, you recognize it immediately. So there's the carrying value. And we expect to sell it here at below its carrying value, its lower fair value then we're going to recognize that loss immediately on the transfer. OK, that loss, that reduction in value. Is therefore recognized as an impairment and that impairment will go there through profit or loss. OK. Uh, there you've got the criteria, uh, but what else do we need to know about the rules? OK, uh, just be aware. Your item of property planted equipment will either be held at the cost model or the revaluation model. Uh, if it's the cost model, you don't need to worry too much uh, at all. You just need to make sure that you have depreciated it up to the date of the transfer. OK, so you might be given last year's carrying value. You might have transferred the asset halfway through the current year. So depreciate it for the six months. OK, uh, because what then happens? Once it is classified as held for sale, it's no longer depreciated. OK, and then once it has been classified as held for sale and then sold, you will then go through there and get yourself a profit or loss on disposal. OK, just be careful. You've then got this revaluation model. Uh, if you have a revaluation model of PPE, so usually for your land and buildings, what you will go through and do there is that immediately prior to the reclassification as a non-current asset held for sale, you will revalue it as normal 
under IAS 16. So you revalue it to fair value and therefore you will get a gain going through other comprehensive income. Once you have then done that, you will then go back to the normal rules, which are down there. You then value it at the lower of the carrying value and the fair value less cost to sell. Bearing in mind now that that carrying value is that up to date fair value. OK, so that's it. That's the rules. They're nothing huge. You know, recap them. You value it at the lower of the carrying value and the fair value less cost to sell. Uh, once you've gone through and done that, if there is a reduction in the value, that is an impairment. Likewise, as well, once it has been classified as a non-current asset held for sale, you then stop depreciating. And then any subsequent sale uh, realises you a gain or loss on disposal. If you are valuing the non-current asset under the revaluation model, don't forget to revalue it immediately prior to the transfer. So revaluing it up to fair value. Under IS 16, take any gains to other comprehensive income. That's it. Okay. But some of the numbers do get tricky, which we'll see in the examples that follow.